Well, Junior, I have returned from another epic quest. Oh boy, what marvelous treasures have you brought back this time? Oh, another one of those? Wow, isn't it magnificent? So how many of these things do you have by now? Six? Maybe seven? Well, let me tell you a story. As you may already know, the earliest known brick film is Journey to the Moon, created between 1972 and 1973 by Danish cousins Lars and Henrik Hassing, as a gift for their grandparents' golden wedding anniversary. Creating an amateur short film was a much more difficult task in the 1970s, as having a camera in the home was a rarity. Journey to the Moon was meticulously planned with a comprehensive storyboard, detailing the action of every shot and the length they should take. The Hassings had no way to edit and had been given a total of 6 minutes and 40 seconds worth of expensive film stock to work with, so they had to get it right the first try. This film is a surprisingly major and well-produced undertaking, and all the more impressive when you remember that the creators were still pre-teens. Following a letter being sent by the Hassings' grandfather, the film was even shown to LEGO CEO Gottfried Kirk Christensen. Journey to the Moon holds up well to this day, and is even still the main standout when compared to the later 1970s brick films. Wait, what later 1970s brick films? Oh yeah, I never told you about those. Though they have all remained much more obscure, there is actually a decent handful of other 1970s brick films that can be found online. These are closer to what you might have expected from a 70s brick film, being smaller in scope but still interesting. A lot of what the films from this time consist of is vehicles driving. With the introduction of the current, poseable design of the minifigure in 1978, minifigs begin to appear in the late 70s brick films. As minifigs make for good pre-built stop-motion puppets, their introduction ought to have inspired more people to try out LEGO for animation. It wasn't long before people were figuring out techniques such as walk cycles. Here at police headquarters, work is underway to prevent a disaster. Residents and the Roadworks Division are turning houses into a wall to keep out the intruder. Ambulance and As for animation in LEGO commercials from this time, it was mostly limited to sets building up and down, with the very occasional shot of a minifigure moving. I think it should have a big middle part and two little sides that stick out. Yeah, that's it. All of the homemade 70s brick films were only shared publicly in recent years through YouTube uploads most with only a couple hundred views, if even. One person shared eight or nine films, and among these can be found what appears to be the earliest located Star Wars brick film, as well as the earliest known superhero brick film. This Superman film provides a good example of why it was important at this time to get the shots right on the first take. Let's add some music for dramatic effect. Presumably, there were more brick films created in the 1970s, be they undiscovered on YouTube, never uploaded online, or lost in real life. On that note, one of the most interesting things I found in my research was a story posted online in 1999 detailing a 1975 brick film titled A Lego Experience. This was reported to be a film half an hour in length, featuring impressive production values, and it even included an original score. This has got to be one of the most desirable missing brick films, and hopefully the Super 8 print still survives and may eventually be digitized and shared online. Well, that's more than I'll ever need to know, but I guess I didn't know about all of those. The end of the 1970s saw the introduction of the popular LEGO theme Classic Space, which I guess would have been just regular space at the time. This theme clearly lent itself well to creating films, as the brick films that can be found from the 1980s are dominated by space adventures and recognizable classic space sets. Nineteen eighty saw the creation of LEGO Wars, 
one of the few well-known early brick films and what was long considered to be the first Star Wars brick film. Lots of the films from the 80s are still early experiments with animation, but there is also an increase in more fleshed out projects. A 1980 film, Project RH, features impressive large sets and outdoor sets and even a bridge explosion scene. Two minutes of this film were available online in 2001, and I contacted the creator who let me know that the full film was 10 minutes long. A small number of 80s brick films began to include sound, which was usually recorded to a separate audio cassette. The moon base has been destroyed! Oh no! It would have been tricky to play the cassette at the right time for the sounds to line up with the picture. Some such films survive without the audio, as the original cassette was lost. A standout film that used this method is Liftoff from 1985. This film demonstrates how production values were improving, with cinematography closer to what we see today. It featured an original soundtrack composed on an Atari 800 computer. Liftoff later helped its director get a job on the LEGO Alpha Team video game. It was also an early brick film online, first shared in January 2000. However, it remained mostly undiscovered until it was shared again in 2014. By the mid-80s, there were also brick films being made on VHS cameras, which were becoming more popular. This format was more forgiving, offering more time to work with and the ability to re-record over a failed shot. It would go on to make brick filming more accessible, though film cameras remained prevalent for a while. Though still rare, animation in LEGO commercials was becoming more ambitious in the 80s. 1981 saw the release of a commercial that took the form of a short film with a plot. This became a well-remembered commercial in the UK, and it was even brought back to TV in 2008. I said a kipper, not a slipper. Thank you very much. <laughs> Later in the 80s, LEGO had a series of seven sport-based brick films created. These had several releases on VHS over the years and also made TV appearances. The series is usually referred to as LEGO Sport Champions, and it was also released under different names over the years. These films remain impressive today as they are shot on a scale much larger than the average brick film. The series in total runs for about 30 minutes. Also released in 1987 was a stop-motion TV show called Edward and Friends. This show was animated using clay recreations of LEGO Fabuland figures, and also included some actual LEGO pieces. This is worth mentioning, but it is also really pushing the boundaries of what can be considered a brick film. In 1985, an Australian student named Lindsay Flay began production on The Magic Portal, which was released in 1989. This is easily the most well-known early brick film, and is even referenced in the LEGO movie. Created with government funding of over 11,000 Australian dollars, The Magic Portal is more ambitious and has higher production values than the brick films that came before it. At 16 minutes long, it is truly an epic for its time. It was set to do a run of international film festivals, but when Flay contacted LEGO to seek permission, he was ordered to surrender the film to them. He instead sent them a copy of the film along with the permission he had received from LEGO Australia before production started, and LEGO backed down. However, by that point, he had missed his chance with the international festivals that were lined up. For a long time, The Magic Portal was often thought to be the first ever brick film. People seemed to become attached to this notion, and as earlier brick films began to be shared publicly, I sometimes observed people trying to come up with technicalities by which the Magic Portal could still be considered the first. It may be a surprise to some that the Magic Portal wasn't influential on the development of brick filming as a whole, as it appears to have been first shared online in 2003, a couple of years after the brick filming community was established online. However, it was an influence on certain early brick films from Australia where it could have been seen as part of underground film festivals or occasionally on the TV show Eat Carpet, which showed student films. In any case, The Magic Portal is an all-time classic brick film and holds up well as a short film in general. On the other end of the production quality spectrum is Oh Well, created over one weekend in 1989 by Andy Boyer and Dave Lenny. This was the first film to star the characters Biff and Mario, who would go on to appear in many more brick films over the next 14 years. This film may not be much to look at, but where it shines is in the comedic writing by Boyer and voice acting by Lenny. Uh, we both had this vision about this far-out babe, and we're on a quest to find her. 
Like what have you boys been smoking? Some groovy grass, perhaps? Although later entries would serve as better introductions to this classic series, Oh Well is still an ambitious film for its time, and worth a watch if it appeals to your sense of humor. Oh well, later babe. Yeah, oh well. In 1989, LEGO launched the Pirates theme, and along with this came some impressive animated promotional material. One of these is a two and a half minute plot-based film titled The Pirates. Terrified, the governor's men ran like frightened rabbits. But naturally, Captain Roger and I, being braver, didn't leave the island empty-handed. Another is a commercial created by Ardman, featuring incredible brick-built animation. The fun just keeps building. This is all too much to keep track of. I liked it better when the magic portal was first. <laughs> you think that's a lot? Wait till you see how many were made in the 90s. No, no, no. I think that's enough for now. Okay, I guess we'll have to do a part two.